Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Bell Tolls for No One, Stories by Charles Bukowski, edited with an introduction by David Stephen Kalon. Not very well edited, because there are quite a few typos in this. This was also a City Lights book, and um, I have a lot of respect for City Lights, I just don't think much of the quality of this, and the print is tiny. It very much does feel like a pulp novel, you know? Um, let me read out the blurb for you. From a self-illustrated unpublished work written in 1947 to hard-boiled contributions to 1980s adult magazines, The Bell Tolls for No One presents the entire range of Charles Bukowski's talent as a short story writer, from straight-up genre writing to postmodern blurring of fact and fiction. An informative introduction by editor David Stephen Kalon provides the historical context for these seemingly scandalous and chaotic tales, revealing the hidden hand of the master at the top of his form. Bukowski is one of my favourite authors. This is one of the books of his that I just haven't got to yet, so I'm trying to tick everything off. The introduction I have very little to say about. In fact, I started reading the introduction and found it so dull that I put the book back down, you know? Uh, there are also, as far as I can tell, there, were there, I don't think there is um, like an appendix or, yeah, it's just sort of stories in random order. Sometimes the stories just start on the page with no title and stuff as well, so, you know. So I appreciated this, uh, this was him talking about when he worked in a slaughterhouse. Again, with all of this it could be fact, it could be fiction, doesn't really matter, you know? But um, it's written in first person for the most part throughout. Sometimes he does refer refer to himself in the third person as well. Depends on the the, the story, you know. But yeah, here um, he's talking about something that, as as a vegan, I could appreciate. I remember the first night I had worked in a slaughterhouse. They would kill the steer in another room and it would come to us skinned and gutted through this space in the wall, headless, hanging by the rear legs, raw red, and we had to take the steer up on our shoulder and hang him up in the waiting trucks, this time by the gristle up near his shoulder. It was heavy work and the steer kept coming, a maze of steer, on and on. As the hours went on and I became more and more fatigued, the whole mass of oncoming freshly murdered steer and working men became a bit mixed in my mind. Sweat ran into my eyes and my vision became foggy. I was so tired I felt drunk. I laughed at the smallest things. My feet hurt, my back, everything. I was pushed into an area of fatigue beyond belief and I felt as if I were losing my identity. I no longer remembered where I lived or why, or what I was doing or why. The animals and the men mixed. And then I had the thought, why don't they murder me? Why don't they murder me and hang me in a truck? Why was I different from a steer? How could they tell? Th this thought was very strong because I could no longer tell the animals from the men except that the animals, I remembered, had been hanging by their legs. As I left that night, I felt that it would be my last night there, and it was. So they never got to hang me in their bloody trucks. No Bukowski steak for you, my dear. Steers is steers, of course, but some weeks later going into meat markets, I couldn't help but think that I was looking at murdered human flesh transformed. And he builds on that a bit more here, he says, I suppose that most people have seen those cooked pigs in restaurant windows, eyes gouged out, snout facing the window with an apple in the mouth and slices of pineapple spread along the back. I was in New York City once, starving and miserable, walking along the sidewalk when I came upon a restaurant window with one of those pigs as the frontispiece. I stopped. Where the eyes had been dug out, two long holes went into the skull. The holes had this burnt out appearance and gave off the flavour of something betrayed and mutilated beyond common sensibility. As hungry as I was, I couldn't imagine sticking a fork into the side of that thing and slicing off a hunk of meat. It sat on a silver plate, obedient and sending off rays of horror. The New Yorkers hurried on or sat inside eating and wiping their mouths. My alliance with the human race became less and less. They never considered anything, they simply accepted. What a crowd they were, without honour, sensibility, and whatever feeling they had, it was only limited to self. That pig, to simply display that atrocity as something valuable to them, that was the key to their going on. That was the door that opened and showed what they were. I said goodbye to my pig and walked through the crowd. There's just a little quote here which I think is great. He said, people die, but love dies faster. So Bukowski makes no secret of the fact that Ernest Hemingway is one of his inspirations. And he writes about him here. It says, um, I dressed and went home and read one of those many books on the life of Ernest Hemingway. And I thought, I wonder if Ernie did all the things with women that I did. If he did, he must have stopped doing it or he wouldn't have gone the shotgun way. Such things were too good to leave voluntarily. Here's where he's writing about the, the good old days. And he says, Grass used to be called tea, and if you had some tea, the girls sometimes gave way because they claimed they were under the influence and it didn't really count. And I, the only reason I know of marijuana being called tea is because of Jack Kerouac and the Beats. I think this little paragraph here is interesting. He says, A prisoner of war is a man who went to war knowingly, knowing he might kill or be killed, capture or be captured, maim or be maimed. There is no special quality of heroism in this. There are few real patriots anymore. There have been too many useless wars and they have come too fast. Again, possibly more true today than it was at the time he wrote it. And uh, he's talking about the racetrack here, but he kind of compares that to war too. He says, um, for instance, it's blah, 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 blah. 
Um, other math boys say, no, it's not so. The take remains at 15%. I don't know. I only know that only one person out of 20 leaves the track a winner. In all decency, those places should be closed. But the tax dollar just won't allow it. It's just like rebuilding Vietnam. There's just too much money made by blowing it to hell and gone in a shit wind. That's magic too. Profit in destroying and profit in rebuilding. But both are done under the guise of morality and righteousness. There's a, there are a few typos throughout this as well. So one here is, uh, listen Blanche, I've got to know what a prostitute it. I think it meant is. And this bit, I'm, I'm assuming this is deliberate because um, this is about school days. Uh, Henry, what are you sneering at? This always shocked me because I hadn't realised that I'd been sneering. Henry, what is the capital of Peru? I knew that the capital of Peru was Bolivia, but I didn't want the guys to think I was a sissy. I don't know. Henry, didn't you study your lessons last night? No, I didn't feel like studying my lessons. I mean, the capital of Peru is definitely not Bolivia. Those are two different countries. The capital of Peru is Lima. I don't know what the capital of Bolivia is. There's one of these articles is written from the point of view of someone who works in like a pornography shop. And um, I just thought this was kind of funny. Around 11.30, a guy came in and bought an inflatable doll. The doll went for $20. Listen, said the guy. Will you blow her up for me? I've got asthma. I've got emphysema, said Marty. You'll have to take her to a gas station. All right, said the guy. Just a normal conversation. Just totally normal. All right, let's get to the last few bits of this bad boy. Only a couple more things I wanted to get share with you guys. There's another great, very Bukowski quote here. Um, You're not even jealous anymore of what I do with other men. You told me that you hated my jealousy, that true love meant trusting another person. Okay, what is true love? Two cats fucking in the courtyard at 2am. That's definitely a very Bukowski thing to say. And I think I'm just going to end by reading this paragraph, which again I think is a really good indicator of Bukowski's writing style. Then Vince reached down and grabbed her between the legs. He kissed her under the throat, shoving her head back. Marty charged from his seat and leapt at Vince, and then there was the mark of the sun and the fuselage and the wings separated and the engines shook loose from the wings and dropped and the fuselage dropped, spinning nose down, whirling like a very large dart and losing its tail section as the engines fell through the sky. It was over a small town in Midwest America and not much damage was done except for part of a tail fin, which sheared through a roof and sliced off a right arm to the shoulder of a seven-year-old girl working on her history lesson. So this is one of two stories that take place during the hijacking of a plane, basically. Um, and yeah, basically in this, the hijackers then demand sex from the stewardesses. It's very, very Bukowski thing. Yeah, all in all, it was alright. Uh, it probably isn't the best place to start with Bukowski. It's also pretty much 80% of the stories come from his Notes of a Dirty Old Man um, like newspaper series. He had a regular column. But he also has a book called Notes of a Dirty Old Man, which I've read. So I think I've read a lot of these already and just didn't know it. It's also not the best put together of books. I mean, it's pretty representative of his work, but I, I just wouldn't say it's the best place for you to start, you know. So overall, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. I'm glad I read it and ticked it off. But yeah, definitely wouldn't recommend starting with this one. So there we have it. That's what I made of The Bell Tolls for No One by Charles Bukowski. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.